Let's work through this practice, which is from Unit 1, Day 7. The first thing you want to notice for every problem is whether you're looking at a velocity graph or a position graph, because the rules are totally different. This is a velocity graph. I know the object is at rest when its velocity is 0. B is the only case where we have velocity equal to 0. Here, in A, the velocity is perhaps positive 3, and so forth. I'm making up values here. So the, choice is, the correct choice is B for number 1. To find if an object is accelerating, we have to remember acceleration means the velocity is changing as time passes. So where do you see a changing velocity? Well, in this graph, we're looking for a changing height of the graph because the height of the graph is velocity. So here we have the velocity value is increasing. It's changing in choice D. For three, we're looking for an object moving to the left. And is this a position or a velocity graph? Ah, oh, it's a velocity. So in terms of velocity, an object moves to the left when v is negative. That's what the negative sign tells us, the direction of their velocity, the direction of their motion. So where do you see negative velocities? C is the only place. It's below the value v equals 0, maybe at perhaps v equals negative 5. Who knows? In number 4, we're looking for negative acceleration. So <clears throat> this is a velocity graph. And where does acceleration appear for a velocity graph? Something that you want to commit to memory is that acceleration is slope of a velocity graph. The way we, we remember that is slope is change in y-axis over change in x-axis. The y-axis is velocity, the x-axis is time. So if we're, looking for, if we're looking for negative acceleration, that means we need negative slope. A has negative slope because the line goes down, and C has negative slope because the line goes down. For five, constant speed. These are velocity graphs. That means the speed, the velocity, does not change. So where do we see a constant, oh, hang on, wait, wait, wait we specify the most the object must be in motion. So B is not correct because for B, the velocity is zero and the object is not in motion. Hence, the only correct answer is gonna be A on this one. C and D are wrong because the velocity is changing, decreasing or increasing. Okay, how about six? Where is there zero acceleration? Well, acceleration, remember, is slope. So where do you see slope equal to zero? The answer is B because the line is flat and C because the line is flat. The line doesn't rise or run. The slope is zero. In seven, we're looking for an object at rest. So remember now, check your axes. These are position graphs. Position graphs have different rules. To be at rest, position can't change. So that's the case for A, B, and C. It's very different, you see. In the very first question, the object was only at rest if the graph was on V equal to zero. But down in number seven, you don't have to be at the position X equals to zero. That's not the only place where an object can stand still. It could stand still at X equals positive five meters from the table. It could stand still when located at a position of negative five meters. All we have to have is non-changing position. So the answer here for seven is A, B, and C. When is the object moving? Whoops, eight. In which case is the object moving? Well, to move, position must change. And so that's only choice D. Nine. When is the object moving to the left? Well, if it's moving to the left, if the person is moving to the left, 
then their position, let's say here's the flower pot, that's the origin, their position was some value negative 4, and now it's negative 8. Their position decreased. Or maybe the flower pot is over on the other side, over here. And in that case, did the position decrease? Well, they were at positive 10. Now they're at positive 6. So yeah, the position decreased. Where do you see decreasing position? The answer is C and D. In which cases, number 10, is the object located to the right of the origin? Well, this, these are position graphs, and your position is positive or to the right. Uh, position is to the right when the value is positive. So where do we see positive position? That's A and D. Now, in number 11, there are some graphs that didn't show up that I think looked like this. Number 11 is interesting because it's not something we had seen directly in class. It asks, in which cases is the object accelerating? Well, to accelerate, what has to happen? The velocity must be changing over time or as time passes. Hmm, how do we see velocity on, this is a, what is this, position or time? I'm oh, sorry, position or velocity? These are position graphs. So where does velocity appear? Well, velocity, you might remember, is slope. So for velocity to change, and why does velocity have to change? Because the object is accelerating. So for velocity to change, slope must change. B and C have changing slope because the line is not straight. The slope is changing. This graph here is getting steeper. If you look at a little bit of run, the rise is not very much, but if you go the same run, the rise becomes much bigger. So the slope would be smaller and then bigger here. Likewise, the slope is changing here on this curved graph. D doesn't have changing slope. A doesn't have changing slope because those lines are straight. 12. In which case is the speed decreasing? Well, does speed have direction? No. For speed to decrease, we must approach the speed of zero. That's the lowest possible speed. There is no negative speed, which is less than zero speed. So where do you see the line approaching this minimum zero meters per second speed? Well, here in C, the graph is getting closer and closer to V equals zero. And in D, the graph is getting closer to speed equals zero. So in C, by the way, if you think about these data points, the Y value is doing something like, first it's negative five, then it's negative four meters per second, then negative three, and so forth. So the speed doesn't care about negative. The speed is simply five, four, three, and so forth. So yes, in fact, speed decreases for choice C. 13. Velocity, by contrast, does have direction. So for velocity to decrease, you simply must go lower on the velocity axis. Okay, so A has a decreasing velocity. It's getting more negative. And D has a decreasing velocity. It's getting less positive. 14. Velocity on a position graph is slope. That's a good thing to remember. Slope is always change in y-axis, which is position, divided by change in x-axis, which is time. That is velocity. For a velocity graph, we find acceleration, again, using slope, because slope is change in y-axis, velocity, divided by change in x-axis. And delta v over delta t is acceleration. For 16, we're looking at a position graph. Displacement. The person starts at a position of positive 4, 
That's what the y-axis tells us, their position. And they end at a position of positive 9 meters. So the displacement is simply final minus initial, choice D. 17, though, is very different because 17 is not position, it's velocity on the y-axis. And displacement is gotten very differently. For displacement, we trace over the line, the purple, we trace over the x-axis, and then we shade the area between those two things. That area is the displacement on a velocity graph. That's a really good thing to have committed to memory. For 18, uh, the object is moving to the right. Yes, she is correct. How do we know? Because the position is increasing, or you could say the slope equals velocity, and the slope is positive because the line goes up. Positive velocity means moving to the right. Okay, 19. Uh, let's see. The object is moving to the right. We're looking at velocity now, not position. So velocity is, hmm, the velocities are all negative. See that? Here's v equals 0. This starts at maybe v equals negative 5. By here, perhaps we're at v equals negative 3. But all of those velocity values are negative. So the object is not going to the right. It's going to the left. Is she correct? No. How do you know? The velocities are all negative. For 20, <clears throat> in this case, we start over here on the left, and then we move in the direction the arrow shows. The object travels to the right here, then it travels this far, then it travels this far, then this far, so it's getting farther and farther. It's traveling more distance per second. This object is speeding up. And is it traveling to the right or left? It's traveling to the right. So the velocity graph, it's traveling to the right, but the speed is increasing, getting farther from zero. For the next one, though, it's still traveling to the right, but the speed is decreasing. It's traveling less time per second. Uh, sorry, less distance per second. So on that velocity graph, it's still up here in the positive half. The velocities are positive, but the velocities are approaching zero. For the next one, we are moving to the left, so go to the very beginning, that's right here. Draw the first displacement arrow. Oop, we didn't go very far. The next one, we went farther. And the next second, we went farther still. We are speeding up because we're traveling more and more distance with each passing second. So we're traveling in the negative direction. We're down here in the bottom half. Oops. But we are speeding up, so we're getting farther from the x-axis, the v equals 0 spot. On this one down here, we are traveling to the left. So the values of velocity are all negative. We're down in the negative half. But you can see that we're traveling less distance with, with each passing second. So we are slowing down. If we're slowing down, we are approaching v equals 0, the x-axis. For this one, our speed is to the right and constant. We know it's constant. It doesn't increase or decrease because the displacements are all constant. But on this one here, we know the object is traveling to the left, which makes it a negative velocity. And if it's traveling to the left, it's down in this area. But the velocity is constant because the distances not get bigger. <clears throat>